It's time for munching. And mating. In the macrocystis or giant kelp. With your host, Dr. Bill Bushing. One of the best things about my job is that when I go to the office, I don't have to wear a tie with my suit. Wetsuit, that is. It's time for munching. And mating. In the macrocystis or giant kelp. With your host, Dr. Bill Bushing. One of the best things about my job is that when I go to the office, I don't have to wear a tie with my suit. Wetsuit, that is. You've seen munching and mating in the macrocystis during the day. Let's take another look at munching and mating in the macrocystis after dark. Catalina Island's famous casino glows as the sun goes down and the moon comes up. The lights from a few boats anchored off the dive park shine as I descend into the water. Being a small town boy, I prefer to avoid the bright lights of the crowded summer weekend nights. Most of my diving is solo, but I occasionally take along a favorite mermaid. All the footage in this video was taken in the Casino Point dive park on the island with its memorial plaque for Jacques-Yves Cousteau. During the day, giant kelp and other algae in the dive park actively capture sunlight and produce their own food through photosynthesis. But at night, in the absence of the sun, these algae reverse course and undergo cellular respiration like human beings. Divers must be cautious of the traps the kelp weave. Seaweeds, including southern sea palm and giant kelp, often show signs of munching, for during darkness snails like the chestnut cowrie come out of hiding to feed and the kelp snail and turbans are often out in the open chewing on macrocystis holdfasts and stipes as well as other algae. Even the abalone, hidden deep in recesses during the day, leave their home scars at night and search for food. Black sea hares frequently hide under rock overhangs during daylight, but come out in the evening to feed. Although octopus are often seen moving about the reef, searching for food under cover of darkness, this one stayed within its hole, safe from nearby kelp bass. Black sea urchins are deep in their holes during daylight to avoid predators, but once the sun goes down, they come out in the open to search for tasty tidbits. Even the little ones come out from their hiding places under rocks. Usually content with drift kelp, these urchins may attack living giant kelp. The urchins show a strong avoidance reaction to light and stampede away from my video beams Wondering why sunrise came a bit early. They have good reason to fear the light. For sheephead are their mortal enemies, as well as of the small herbivorous snails during day. But at night, even the dominant males like the four Oscars turn into cowardly lions and hide in the reef. 
perhaps from seals and sea lions. Here a male, pestered by a juvenile Garibaldi, bears his fangs to chase it off. The females shelter as well at night, this one unsuccessfully seeking entrance into a seemingly safe hiding place. Others have found their beds, but one is having trouble settling in comfortably. Hey, this princess must require a sealy posturepedic mattress. Although occasionally seen during the day, females more frequently exhibit these modeled patterns at night when they may provide better camouflage. Of course, many divers are nocturnal. As one of the sea's major predators, Homo sapiens are always on the lookout for a little tail. They submerge at night in search of lobster that come out of their shelters to scavenge and feed, making them far more vulnerable to hungry hunters. In defense, the lobster may crawl under the seaweed sometimes very effectively. Occasionally a hungry bass may check them out, but bugs use their antennae to fend them off. This is why the antennae are often held high above the bug to sense predators and defend against them. Lobster are also capable of jetting away backwards, as many divers have discovered, bumping into other bugs, fish, and sometimes the divers themselves. If all else fails, they can crawl back into their daytime shelters until the coast is clear. Of course, this makes it hard for humans to find them, but also greatly limits their ability to find food. In late fall, I noticed many of the crustaceans crawling on the walls. I don't think they were suffering from island fever. Thick growth of the invasive Japanese kelp Sargassum philocenum made moving about on the bottom difficult. Up on the walls they can avoid this awful intruder, but it also forces them into a smaller space to hunt for food. This leads to increased conflict between them and a new sport of rappelling down the walls without a rope. Yee-ha! Gary Garibaldi, self-anointed king of the kelp forest, has a reputation for being very aggressive and in your face when defending his territory by day. This is even more true during the nesting season, although they get along at other times. On my night dives, these fish become rather sheepish and shelter in the rocks just like their damsel relatives, the blacksmith. They did not even defend their nests when I approached after dark during mating season. Oops, must have been blinded by my light.
Their cousins the blacksmith school and feed during the day, but shelter in the reefs many nooks and crannies to avoid predators like kelp bass, mores, seals, and sea lions. Of course, they are not always successful. Sea chubs like the opali may be seen feeding up in the kelp canopy. But at night, they are generally solitary and stay near the reef and bottom. Their cousins, the half moon, are also active during the day and may gather in groups. But at night they too seek shelter from predators by remaining low in the water column near the reef. Giant kelpfish seem to feed day and night. and may shelter or nest in the invasive Asian sargassum kelp. Black perch also seem oblivious to the time of day. I found scorpion fish more obvious at night in my video lights. However, their behavior remains largely the same. Sit still and wait. As ambush predators, they let food come to them rather than hunting for it. I did notice that this sedentary species uses its tail or caudal fin to help stabilize its position on the reef. as well as to flee if I approach too close. And to thrust when they attack. Their relative, the rainbow scorpion fish's bright red color, makes them less visible at night and less caught by my video lights. During the day, they hide deep in the reef, but at night, venture out a wee bit. At times, they actually move about, and not just to escape my camera. <laughs> no, I didn't reverse this footage. Oops, goodbye. A hungry kelp bass wisely has second thoughts. Tree fish are closely related to scorpion fish and also exhibit similar behavior day and night. Their other rockfish relatives are largely sedentary. Unless I invade their space. Grunts like the Salima are a schooling species during the day, often seen winding through the kelp forests. However, at night the schools break up and solitary individuals spend their time feeding. The Salima's large eyes make spotting prey easier, especially during full moons. Here they seek out plankton and invertebrates that enter the water column from the rocky reefs. Through his collaboration with marine biologist Edward F. or Doc Ricketts, Steinbeck came to write 
it is advisable to look from the tide pool to the stars and then back to the tide pool again. So I looked up through the apparent void of open water towards the night sky and slowly a myriad of critters appeared darting about like shooting stars. These included a number of different crustaceans who left the safety of the reef to feed on their tiny zooplankton relatives in the open waters. In time, the view approached that of a spectacular meteor shower. Their presence in my lights attracted the attention of fish predators from baitfish and kelp surf perch to a few brave blacksmith that ventured out of their shelters. A rather sedentary daytime resident is the round stingray. I usually see them buried in soft substrate by day unless I spook one out. But at night I was amazed to encounter them frequently, often bumping into me or my subjects as I filmed. In just a few night dives I acquired more footage of these interesting rays as they flew over and into the reefs looking for a nighttime snack. However, not once did I see a single morsel of food enter their mouths. The smaller individuals love worms, shrimp, crabs and other crustaceans while the larger ones add clams to their diet. The lobster this one spooked was too big a mouthful. Although these rays are probably responsible for most of the stings received by bathers on Southern California beaches, not once did one become defensive at my presence. The stinger on this one may have been used earlier as there appear to be shreds of flesh stuck on it. I encountered this male that was missing its tail. Its two claspers extend from the rear to either side of where the tails should have been. Unfortunately, the invasive sargassum grew thicker and taller as autumn progressed and it became more and more difficult to locate and film these interesting rays. I have observed only a few native species using the newly arrived sargassum. So I was surprised to find this anemone clinging to it on one night dive. In the introduction I promised mating by the night shift, but it seems that unlike humans, few marine critters favor the privacy of the dark for their intimate moments. Perhaps the most interesting example on these dives was the appearance of several species of worms rising up from the reef towards the ocean's surface. Their corkscrew-like propulsion seemed pretty effective as they worked their way through the water column. These unidentified species seem most obvious during nights of bright moonlight, but I can't say with certainty that the full moon triggered their attempts at a moray, and I don't mean the fishy kind. A second species, possibly a scale worm, was also present. Its style of locomotion was quite different, but the goal seemed to be the same, to reach the surface and find a mate. Even though several might be seen in close proximity during their ascent, they never paired up en route.
Perhaps the higher up in the water column they spawn, the further the currents will take their eggs and larvae. <laughs> Don't want the kids sticking too close to home. Oops, this one is heading back down to the safety of the reef. One night I looked up and was startled to see this brittle star drifting through the water column. Certainly it was not seeking a mate. Most likely it had been dislodged from the kelp and been swept up by the current. Until it slowly settled back to the reef and home. Southern kelp crabs remain largely hidden during the day. However, I did spot this one crawling up the giant kelp, undoubtedly looking for something to munch on. But these two had the other M word in mind, or at least one of them did. Oops, isn't that a moray in there? Notice how gently and tenderly the larger male carries his partner with him. Dear, I think it's time for us to find a more private place to tryst. And with that, I'll retreat as well. Good night.